The spies came back. Ten of them said, There are giants in the land. We cannot go up. There were two spies with a different spirit. They said, God's promises are true. The covenant he gave to our forefathers is still valid. The world says, We must give land for peace. We say, Christians must stand with Judea and Samaria. The world presents a biased and negative representation. It is now time for the Joshua and Caleb Report. Stories from the heartland of Israel. Mr. Udi, can you uh, share with us a little bit about your gallery here? It's just so many beautiful paintings we're looking at here, so can you just tell us a little bit about it? Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Uh, I mean, the, the beginning of this gallery started actually in 1948, but not as a gallery. There was a fierce fighting here. The Jordanian came with the army, Palestinian army from Jordan, and there were a few Jews who, who fought against them. My dad was one of those. Eventually, the Jordanian captured the place and took the few that was here as uh, prisoners. At this time, my father was 18. He said, don't worry, we will be back. And I will be the first Jew to come back to the old city and buy a piece of land here. And that sounds very crazy. We just, uh, that, that was the war, the old city was captured. And indeed, no Jews could come to the old city until 1967. 1967 was the Six Day War. I was nine years. I remember the, my dad was recruited to the army. He was in the Egyptian border. And the fight started with Egypt, a few days later with Syria. And with Jordan, it was sheer coincidence. I don't know how many people know that the whole war with Jordan started as a coincidence. What happened? The leader of Egypt, his name was Nasser, Abdul Nasser, he realized that he's losing the war. So he called King Hussein, who was the, the king of Jordan, and told him, my tanks are already next to Tel Aviv. We are winning the war, and you get nothing. Everything will stay Egyptian, unless you're gonna join us. So King Hussein, just to show that he's doing something, bombed our parliament. And that started the war with Jordan. So some of the soldiers that was already in the Egyptian border was then transferred transferred into the, to fighting here in the old city and what called Judea and Samaria. So all of the ideas that we are in Judea and Samaria, as I said, either sheer coincidence or believes that's the Lord planned because this war was not planned by Israel in advance. And uh, because everybody knew about my dad promise, his commander came to him and said, you know, the paratrooper already fighting in Jerusalem, reach the Suez Canal and I'll let you go to Jerusalem. So my dad reached here, right towards the end of the war, and he did his spoke through in Arabic, uh, he went around the neighbors here, and he said, who's ready to sell a property? And one of the Arabs here said, he bought it two weeks before. It was where it's not the parking lot. When you came here, you passed through a parking lot, it used to be a hold home. Nothing to speak about, teeny, just like this room, and that was all the money my dad had. That's what he wanted. So my dad called my mother and said, listen, I can buy it. That's my dream. But that's all the money. We're going to have to sell our home and everything we have to buy it. And he's, my dad told me years later, you know, I promised this to do that. But if your mother would say no, I wouldn't come. Because with three little kids and with nothing to feed them and to spend, to risk all the, I would back up for my promise. But my mother answered him, if we'll fall, we'll fall together. That was her answer, which means I'll follow you everywhere, even if it's a mistake. So they sold the home in Petah Tikva, paid this Arab, and here we are. We moved first myself and my father. I was nine, I said, and my mother and with two other kids was, too, it was still dangerous, with snipers around. So my dad was, said, Udi will know how to manage. You can stay at home, but with the little kids, they didn't know. So they came about a month or six weeks later. 
So sadly, there is one Jewish family in all of this old city full with Arabs. No schools, we didn't have running water, our toilet was a hole in the ground. And my dad, who was an artist, made it into a gallery. So it was in the same room. We had a, a teeny place for ourselves, a gallery, but nobody came to buy. People passed by, people started to come after the war, people was walking towards the wall, but nobody thought even, had the idea that somebody is here and they have a gallery. So my dad came with a new idea. You know, after like a week of no, not selling anything and he needed to, to get us some food, he had the idea to call the gallery the Old City Art Gallery. So he put a huge sign. I helped him even fill up the... He wrote the letters and I filled it up with the colors. But he wrote the Old City, but City he wrote deliberately with an S. Suddenly like a miracle. Every Australian, Canadian, American, just name it, came in to tell us we have a spelling mistake. Once I came in, I spoke with my dad, they got a cup of coffee, and before you know it, they became very friendly and uh, bought paintings. And that became like a, a very well-known thing. People from all over the world start to come to this little place. We did more than that. Our home used to be open. The gallery worked like until 5 p.m. And then people who didn't have where to stay could just, we had many mattresses and you could just sleep on the floor and, and come and use our little kitchen. And that's for years. Never had our privacy, that was a, like a commune, if you can call it this way. Slowly, even very famous people came in. For example, there was a, an American, I remember, conductor for music, Leonard Bernstein. Leonard Bernstein is like the top league. He always stayed in the top hotels. He used to have a suite in King David Hotel. Paid him, I think, then $300, $400 a night in those days. But he used to stay in our place. So why did he have the suite? Because he couldn't stand our toilet. Our toilet was just a hole in the ground. So we never need to take a shower or toilet. He used to go to the hotel. But he said he stayed here because that's where you meet the nice, that's where you really meet the, the, the people and that's where he enjoyed it. So that's how we came into the old city. Uh, no, as I mentioned, no school. So uh, if somebody like you came in, and those days people had more time, my dad used to say, uh, what are you doing? Are you an engineer? Oh, could you spend like 20 minutes with my son and teach him math, for example? So I had a, a book, and each one marked until where he taught me. And I had sometimes 20, 30 teachers in the same day. Oh, wow. So that's it, because no school, the only other school was Arab, and I didn't speak Arabic yet. Uh, but we moved in, and, and that was the, the my, my dad saw it really as the, as the dry bones in the, in the Bible that suddenly become alive again. We became alive, we were the first here, and, and, uh, and since then, that's, that's how the gallery started. I myself was also trained as, a, as an artist, and what I'm doing today is, is go around the places that I used to play as a child, and uh, try to pass the message through my paintings. And I'll give you an example. I mean, we're actually behind us, I don't know if, you, if you, the camera can see. If you'll take this uh, painting, for example, it looks like a, uh, somebody can take a photograph like that, but it's not exactly. What is this painting? Is First of all, a bit about the old city. The old city of Jerusalem have several quarters. It has the Christian quarter, Muslim quarter, Armenian quarter, and Jewish quarter. You can see the difference. All the, other, the first quarters I mentioned, Armenian, uh, Christian, Muslim, uh, look today more or less the, way, the same way they looked 200 years ago. A part of some elect electric wires or whatever, Nothing changed 300 years ago, same. The Jewish quarter is different because the Arab demolished it in 1948. They destroyed most of it. So when we came back in 67, we had to rebuild it. So here we see a combination. Some walls, sometimes in the same house, are the old walls. And some parts that was destroyed had to be rebuilt. This particular street on the right side, this is the old wall. On the left, and if I may, well, and you can see the arch here. This is the new one. You can see it's much straighter lines. The lines here are not straight. That was the old way of building. Everything is one. So this boy is walking between old and new. He's not just walking. Then I said, each one of us have a choice in life to decide to walk in the shadow or in the light. 
Wow. He made a choice. So, this is, in a sense, when you're looking at a painting like that, it's, a la it's as I mentioned before, it's a language. It's something that you want to say. It's not just the ability to paint. I presume everybody who has been trained uh, as an artist or as a photographer have the ability to do the basic things. But what I'm trying to do is, is a stage further, is to pass a message and what is, uh, what is Jerusalem all about, what is our life all about. And uh, I really don't see Jerusalem just uh, as a center of, for me, that's my home. It's for everybody, for all the world. Wow, so growing up, obviously you grew up in Jerusalem, but then I guess you went to serve in the military at some point, or? Yeah, like every Israeli uh, turning 18, I went to the military. After I finished the, the military, I uh, went to study art for four years. Actually, flew to Scotland. I studied in Edinburgh, Scotland. Came back, taught art here. Taught in the teacher training course, how to teach children, how to uh, protect them for even colors that can be acidic, and, and what to teach and not. And uh, painted all the time. And eventually also start to show my own artwork here. So painting was your life, that's just what Carry on the legacy of your father, I guess, in a way. <clears throat> My father himself was an artist who was uh, later uh, wounded in the army, became a war veteran, a bullet went through his right hand. So he couldn't paint anymore. Uh, he was lucky to even have his hand uh, uh, survived. He had to go through nine operations uh, to just keep it. Uh, just to give you an example, he could, today you have, uh, you have to open the radio or TV, they have the forecast whether it tomorrow going to be rain or, or sunny. My dad could tell me that within a day or two it's going to be rain because he had so many pieces of metals that those metals were sensitive. He could know that the temperature changed before anybody knew. He said tomorrow going to be rain, and, and that was correct. Like the, the metal uh, in his hands moved a little bit, uh, and he could feel it. So how sensitive was that? But he couldn't paint anymore, and uh, it became really more like a dealer for other artists, and uh, I was involved with that, and I see myself here uh, coming to the gallery, not just business. I mean, the Lord sent me, uh, provide me uh, with what to live, but I'm here to welcome everybody. I'm here even as a, I even see myself as a soldier who come to his post here, because if I won't come here every day, somebody else, maybe Arabs or whatever, will eventually move in. So I see that as, as more as a duty than, than it is a, a work. Can you share with us? You said you moved in when you were nine years old yeah. here to the old city, can, and you've lived here the whole time since then? Most of the time. Most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Can you yeah. share with us a little bit of how Jerusalem has changed from that time till now? Uh, no, no, no. The changes. I mean, when we came in, uh, and my neighbors, uh, the, as I mentioned, all Arabs, the, it looked like Iran. All of them was covered with, with black things. I mean, it's, it's a very, very, very different. It's a, it's a, I mean, to get water, we didn't have running water. Everything was coming with donkeys. We had to have uh, uh, food, uh, gas. It wasn't gas, wood to warm the house, everything. It's a different world today. So, so do you remember when the first Jewish family moved in after you? Like you were the first and the second, yeah. More than two years later. More than two years really? later. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was uh, like a yeshiva, it's a school older, but they used to come study and then go back. But so for not two years be. you lived in Jerusalem by yourself? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. There, there was not even a, a proper place for them to stay. I mean, everything was in ruins, but we were ready to live in, in ruins. We fixed it a little bit. but. Uh, Still, was uh, in the winter. It was really cold. I mean, you don't. Uh, there's holes in the walls, and it's really cold. And for years, uh, our shower was just only cold water showers. Not everybody ready to to live in, under those conditions. So you said earlier that there was actually snipers. At around. the first few, it was look. The war finished. Uh, Jordan surrendered, but it doesn't mean that it was still all the soldiers. Uh, even the Jordanian soldiers surrendered, and, and there were still snipers around. There. So it still, it took a few few. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I mean, if you ask me, I didn't uh, felt it, I didn't, uh, but, but my dad explained to me later why they decided to move only me and him first, because he said, you could protect yourself by, if I can explain to stay in the house, you'll stay. You cannot say to a three year old boy, don't go out or whatever, because they might go out and, and be uh, killed. So, so they came slightly later. 
my dad, my brother, my sister. So can you talk about your family a little bit? My family, yeah, that, that's the story. Are, we, we, we are, are you married? Or? I myself, yeah, I'm married to a lovely wife and uh, five kids who come here from time to time. They know the history. I think it is, uh, you know, it is a, a duty of, uh, forget about the, even the old city, it, uh, it is a duty to each one of us to pass certain values and history to his kids, to his family. Uh, in the end of the day, it doesn't matter how wealthy you are, what kind of car you drive, uh, th those are not the things that matter. It's how much time you spend with your kids, and while you're spending time with them, what are the values that you pass to them? And, uh, and that's it. So they're coming here, they know about how we, they come to the old city, I tell them the story, and uh, those that we mentioned before, big farmers. So these are the seeds that I'm putting in them. The Lord will provide each one of them, the amount of rain, hopefully. And, uh, and I'm sure each seed will come slightly different because uh, uh, no two people are the same. So even if you put the same seed, if it's a wheat, certain uh, area might be a rocky ground, certain might be much softer, certain get more rain. So you have different, uh, the outcome is slightly different, but it is still my duty to put the seeds. Mr. Udi, it's been an honor and a privilege for us to meet you, to hear your stories You're about your father and just the amazing man that he was, and then you just carrying on right in his footsteps. It's, uh, it's amazing work that you're doing. Thank you. We say, just, Kola Kavod. Thank you. Keep just, up the amazing just, work. Just, just uh, last word. Yes. Uh, you said about my father, don't forget, and he mentioned to me, my mother, although she wasn't both a, she is very important to remember. Without yes. her saying, uh, I will follow you, nothing would have happened. And I think it's true to, again, in the world. I mean, it's uh, not necessarily just anybody who's in the front is the important. I think you can agree with this saying. They say behind every good man is an amazing woman. Yes, yes. That's <laughs> good. So I, I, wanna, I want you to explain some of the stories of some of your photos here in Jerusalem. Maybe we can just kind of bounce around and see those. And then uh, I wanna, I, I, Jerusalem is such a place that inspires me every time I come. So I'd love for you to kind of tell some of the stories behind them. Like I see a lot of paintings around here that just that show a lot of life in Jerusalem. So I'd love for you to share a couple of pictures. And what is pleasure. Uh, uh, the story of this painting related to the conversation we had because we mentioned that my father came in, in 1967, was an artist, and he was the first to paint the paratrooper at the wall. And we don't know where the painting is. Uh, it was sold to some collector and, and we lost track of it. Uh, I wish I don't even have a, a proper photograph of, of, of the painting itself. But uh, it was a well-known painting. And my dad passed after he, he passed away uh, nine years ago. And then I made a decision to go back to the same subject. That was his first painting here in the old city. And to his honor, I'll do the same subject, but uh, with a new aspect of what happened today. So those are, are four uh, different units. For example, the, the red is the red brigades, is the paratroopers uh, here in the old city. But the old concept is they are here. Uh, this painting is, is more about the, the freedom of worship. I mean, we couldn't come to the old city. We couldn't, uh, even some Christian could not come, Jews. Yet today we can. We can come, we can pray. We, we manage to do that by protecting ourselves and they have weapon, but it's not enough to have weapon. You have really to have the spirit. And they are asking, they are next to the wall, the only remains of the temple, and asking the Lord to protect themselves. So that's the whole idea. The spirit is coming through the days of the te old temple blow through the prayer shawl. They are here, they are together, which is a very important thing. The painting itself is, is, made, is an oil painting, yet in certain areas I actually crush Jerusalem stone. I actually take the stone, oh, really? Really? crush it, and uh, those who will feel it later with your hands, you can feel the texture of, of the stone. So it is uh, Jerusalem, uh, it is part of Jerusalem, it's a story happened in Jerusalem, yet uh, it's to, to all of us everywhere.
So that's wow. what I paint. So yeah. are, you, are you the only one who does that, actually puts the stone in the yeah, paint? Yeah, actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Did as, you, far as, know, as, really? as far as I know. As far as I know. Did you come, would you come up with that yourself? You just had an idea? Yeah, or? it's a very interesting concept. Uh, the, if you work with oil paint, oil paint uh, dry by oxidation. If, if there's no oxygen, if you put an oil painting that you're going to paint, let's say you paint, and in a room without oxygen, it will never dry. So what happened for artists who did, like Van Gogh, very famous artist, very, very heavy, thick paint, the outside dried first. The inside was still wet for years later. Now if you move the painting, it will start to create cracks. So if you look at the museums and look at some of the old oil paintings, they're full with cracks. The reason is the outside, it was just like an earthquake. The outside was dry, but inside still moved. They moved the painting and the cracks appear. To avoid that, I said, instead of using very heavy paint, I'd use less paint, but with a new mixture. The mixture was a, a gesso. It's like a kind of a, a, um, it's kind of a glue which doesn't have acid, with Jerusalem stone, so I can create texture, yet there is less uh, an option for it to crack. So okay. I'm actually, uh, oh, this gallery with the interview is down here in, in the Cardo, the Roman street. This is called Ayudim Street, the main street of the Jewish Quarter. But I, the idea here was to, to portray uh, kids uh, that have all the world, all life in front of them. So we are here, we are looking, they are, they are slightly in the dark, and looking, uh, you can see, we can see more details of what happened in present. We can see less as what happened in the future. That's where our vision comes uh, uh, from you. Uh, and there's many more to, to things like that happen here. When you are originally looking at that, you don't think of all these details, but the idea is, yeah, you, you open the news, you know what happened today. There's nobody can promise you what happened in the future. You can uh, forecast. There's certain ways to know through the Bible, but again, it's not very clear. Uh, but they have all the life, and they have to fill this uh, this uh, gap, uh, just like any of us. Mm -hmm.